Hello and welcome to this episode of the Guides with Glasses podcast. I'm Bandito John, and I have with me No Name Josh. Hey Josh. How's it going, man? Hey, so on this episode, the new DLC for Walking Dead, 400 Days, uh, came out, and we both played it, and we definitely want to talk about that. It's awesome. And then um, I think we're going to have a special theme episode where we're going to talk about our favorite Star Wars games. Yeah. Uh, there's tons yeah. of them, so how could you have a <laughs> yeah, shortage? We... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, to start things off on The Walking Dead, uh, you, so so did you, So did it's interesting because there's there's five characters and you get to play basically little mini stories um, from each. Have you played all five people? Yes, I have. I finished it uh, yesterday night, actually. And uh, How long was it? Was it pretty short or was it... It's really short. It I think... Maybe a couple of hours tops. I mean, I kind of flew through it, so I was done. I was done with all but one by the time I talked to you yesterday, and it was. I had only played it for maybe an hour, so. Um. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I so I just started playing it like an hour ago, and I played through two of the campaigns. I think it was Bonnie and Russell. Um, oh my God, they're they're rowdy. I I they're thought that crazy. too. I told Cassie that. I was like, man, these ones are, like, especially sad. And she's like, well, it's The Walking Dead. It's supposed to be sad, right? And I was like, yeah, well, these it, ones are it's, pretty terrible. Yeah, I thought, well, maybe it's because, you know, with the actual game, it, you had multiple episodes. And there were some bad events and some, you know, pretty happy events. You know, some things that did kind of work out or, you know, you, you're meeting people. And, and t- some situations are good. You do meet good people. And it's this one, it's like... Oh my god, like every situation is horrible. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you played Bonnie and who? And Russell. So I played like the... The, the two kid. worst. Um, <laughs> huh? I said the two worst. Yeah, so so Russell is... Uh, we're going to do a little bit of spoilers here, sorry. But Russell's the story where you get into this guy's car and you basically um, uh, see what happens there. And then, and then Bonnie is this story where you are kind of a, a third wheel almost. Um, you're kind of flirting with this, this guy who's married. And oh man, that story was so sad. I was not expecting this. It's crazy how like heartfelt I get and attached to these characters I get in in the five minutes I played it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the power of the story. I'm like, oh my god, you know this person died. What the hell? I just met them. Yeah, yeah, uh, that part was fucking crazy, dude. When I I almost went back and played it just to see if I didn't do anything, what happened? You know what I mean? With uh, are you talking about the pipe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. Go back. Oh, that was that was disgusting. Yeah, I I just wasn't sure how that was all gonna work out, and it worried me. Yeah. Well, I think this is interesting because it's kind of, you know, it's a whole new story. It's supposed to bridge the gap between season one and season two. It gets me really pumped up for season two. Um, uh, at least so far of what I played, you don't get to uh, experience any of the characters that are in season one. Um, but I think that's an okay thing. I think they they introduced some, some new interesting people. I w- uh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought the same thing when I started playing it. I'm like, this is seriously... A stopgap by uh, Telltale to hold people over to keep The Walking Dead in people's minds until they can get the the full on seasons ready. Yeah, you know it's interesting is that it seems like this game or the games are kind of off season from the TV show, so it's kind of like we're getting a constant Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> I like it. It's, it. I'm a fan of Walking Dead. Yeah. To be honest, I actually like. The Walking Dead game better than I do the show. I do too. What? So, The Walking Dead show, I think, in the first season was amazing. I love the show. I love the whole, oh, you woke up and it's this apocalyptic world. You know, what's happening here and how do we deal with it? And then after it got on to season two, it was more about... Um, it was less about the zombies and it was more about the people. But, you know, I was kind of annoyed by some of the people. Some of the characters were just... Like really, this per- this character is so stupid. You know, just go ahead and die already. <laughs> and you know, with the game, it's interesting because the game actually evolves based on your choices. You know, so it's like if you want your character to be a hard ass, or if you want your character to be soft, or if you want your character to be nice or mean, 
you can tailor it to be that experience and different characters react to you in different ways and so i don't know it's really interesting you know um and i think the voice acting is is great in the walking dead games i agree and i i think that's another thing that's starting to show in like just society in general is i think people want an active participation in what is mostly you know a, a movie so you know what I mean? Like, going to a movie is very passive, yeah. and you're kind of told what's happened. In a video game, you're more able to choose what you want to do, which I think people would prefer now, especially now. Games have gotten so, I don't want to say artistic, because it's like a battleground there, but like, so yeah. well done that, uh, you know, they're movies. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting because sometimes I prefer games to movies. You know, movies are, are fantastic because you get to sit down and kind of zone out and, and watch something for that two hours. But, you know, these games are providing a different level of involvement, you know, a different level of, of engaging the, the watcher. Um, and I think uh, Walking Dead does a really good job of that because Walking Dead doesn't really require any s- skills to play it. Um you know, a few times there's like, oh, press A really quick or something. But it's not something that, like, you know, my mom or my dad couldn't accomplish. Um, it's something that, like, really anybody could pick up a controller and hold it and understand on what to do. And it's engaging. You know, like, somebody could be sitting down on the couch next to you not playing it, but they're still engaged with the story and the choices that happen. That's actually so. how I got Cassie to play The Walking Dead. Because I was like, yeah. just watch me play for a few minutes. And she's like, oh, my God, this is like... yeah my. My wife has actually watched me play it from the very beginning, and, like, she doesn't want me to play it unless she's there, just because, uh, you know, she's involved. She's like, oh, choose this one, you know, or this is how this person should answer. So, um, yeah. And and you get uh, upset when someone's an asshole. Like, you're like, god damn it, I hate this person. I I hated the dad of that one lady the entire time. So glad when Kenny smashes his face in. I'm like, thank god. (laughs) I did not want to. He was an asshole. Oh, dude, he's but, such an asshole. But then you have a choice of, like, are you an asshole back to him? Or, like, do you kind of tolerate it? Or do you try, like, being nice to him to try to change him? Um, I had a serious yeah. dilemma at that part where you had to choose between, uh, like, whether or not you were, like, way to go, Kenny, or, like, holy shit, Kenny, what the fuck? And then console the, yeah. the lady, but... um. Well, what did you choose in that situation? I said... Well, Kenny was kind of, I was in the middle. I was like, Kenny was right, you know. The chance of him surviving was pretty low or something like that, you know. So, <laughs> I tried to play the middle ground, but neither one of them liked me for it. I was, I felt like an ass. <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, another interesting story in Walking Dead is you're always given kind of four choices. And, you know, it, it is sometimes pretty obvious on whether you choose, you know, the, the good guy or the bad guy path. But, um... There's also the path of just being silent, which I think is a really interesting gameplay mechanic um, that you don't have to answer, and certain characters react differently to that, you know? Oh, I know. I've missed a few times where I haven't, uh, like, hit the button fast enough and you got to make the quick decisions. Like, I'm reading, and I'm like, oh, I don't really know, and then it is just silent, and someone gets, like, super upset, and I'm like, damn it, it's my own fault. I should have read and thought faster, but... Yeah. So... How do you like the little mini episode stuff that they have in 400 hours? Like, you know, I think it's I think it's interesting. I think it's different. Um, I do like it. I think it's a great value for five bucks. Um, we thanks to our friend Andrew, he posted up that uh, the price is actually half off on GameStop.com. But um, I think that I I you know I've been so engaged with the characters, and I think that I think this is a testament to the game that. I want to see more, and I wish each little mini episode was more than just fifteen minutes. Um, but you know, I understand based on the scope and you know of this DLC, there's probably limitations in that. But I, you know, I think it's cool. Um, I like it. I I think this is an interesting way of presenting a lot of different characters really quickly, rather than just doing like you know basically a one episode. You know, with going across a whole new char- set of characters instead of we're getting like the very dramatic events from uh, five different people. I think it's a unique way of storytelling. Yeah, it's like, 
it's interesting because if you played the missions in a certain order, some of this stuff would make sense from other ones. Uh, oh, okay. I just kind of randomly chose. I did I, too, I and I didn't really know that. I, I think that's the point of it is like, you kind of like say you play something that happened like way down the road and somehow it's somewhat attached to something else then you're like oh yeah. i see that's why that happened you know or yeah yeah it's just kind of interesting and you try to like oh what what day was that when that occurred did that happen before or after this situation so i don't know it's pretty cool yeah it is cool i mean do you do you feel like it's worth the 5 bucks i mean do you think this is it you know Basically, each little person's story is a dollar, um, you know, for 15 minutes of gameplay. Is, do you feel like that's a good value proposition? I, I think so. I, I really do, actually. Um, the thing for me is, is like, an hour of fun typically costs you like $10, whether it's bowling, roller skating, going and playing some whirly ball, John. Oh, yeah. All those things are very fun. All those things are very fun, but they cost you about... 10 to 20 dollars an hour so to me five bucks for an hour and a half of fun uh gameplay and like it's engaging that's worth it to me mm -hmm. so on that note uh we've never talked about whirly ball and whirly ball is a pretty geeky activity <laughs> i don't know whirly about ball geeky, is amazing but it's pretty awesome well, it, it, it's definitely like a Pacific Northwest thing. It, you know, where I grew up in Texas, never even heard of this. And then I came out here and I was like, what the hell is Whirly Ball? It is the greatest damn sport ever been <laughs> conceived. Um, so for our listeners that maybe that have never heard of Whirly Ball, it is basically a kind of a cross between uh, lacrosse and basketball um, while you're on bumper cars. It is amazing. So. It is amazing. Yeah, you're on bumper cars. There is teams. You use a lacrosse uh, ball picker upper, um, and you try to shoot into what's almost kind of like uh, basketball nets that are up high, um, that yeah. are angled, and uh, super freaking fun. It's like even if you suck at it, you're still driving a bumper car and hitting people. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was I actually thought about like I thought about like getting hardcore into it and like joining a league. I just think that'd be so much fun. But then. It's so far away. It's out in the boonies. It's not that far. Not for us. you, anyway. It was only in Edmonds. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, it was like, you know, like a good like 20 minute drive. Uh, yeah, it's like 20, I'm 30 minutes away. It was like 20, 30 yeah. minutes away for me. I just thought about like, you know, getting like a sweatband, you know, like the basketball player, like the 80s sweatband, you know, <laughs> wearing one of those. <laughs> getting some high nylon shorts, you know, getting all really hardcore into it. That'd be amazing. What's amazing is that, <laughs> oh man, uh, I just like how you can have 10 friends all on one court beating the crap out of each other, essentially. And then it's all good times. And you get to play multiple games during that, you know two hours so if you have more people they can be out eating pizza and drinking beer come in and play after you know yeah. you guys get done it yeah. was, it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun it, it's it, this needs to become like a worldwide phenomenon i, I wish there was <laughs> I, I there is other places around the u.s that do do it but um very yeah few. it's, it's uh, yeah very few it's so sad. amazing so listeners i heard promote whirly ball yes and uh I also heard that Quidditch is becoming a real sport. Have okay, you heard about this? how is that humanly possible? <laughs> well, people just stick brooms between their legs and they run around. Oh, well, that's just dumb. That's, that's, <laughs> I was like, oh man, I hope somebody came up with some ridiculous, like, uh, <laughs> hanging from a, you know, a harness on the ceiling while having a broomstick and you're, like, whipping around the room somehow. Oh, but... no, no, this is like... Yeah, these are just like some college kids having fun with like brooms. Okay, <laughs> so so it's like it's like layer, you know, where or live action role playing, you know, LARPing. Um, kind of, well, there's actually like rules and people. There's teams and there's leagues for this stuff, and they actually like will travel to go compete against other teams. So it actually is like becoming a a real sport. I mean, it's not something that like you know. How do they make up? How do they get the for. snitch? <laughs> how does that so work? the snitch is a. I, I don't know all the rules, but apparently, like, one person is a snitch, and then it's kind of like a flag football kind of thing, where, like, you try to catch the snitch, or, you know. Okay, yeah. this is just weird. 
That's <laughs> just. <laughs> a, I don't know how that's gotten like super popular. Yeah, yeah. That that's a, that, that's apparently becoming a real big thing. So interesting. Yeah, other ge- geeky sports. Yeah. 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 So on the topic of a uh, uh, Star Wars games, we wanted to kind of touch on that. Um. So. I have to admit, you know, and I'm going to lose a lot, a lot, a lot of my geek cred here. Um, I forgot Josh, about you this. already know these facts, <laughs> but whenever we bring up Star Wars, I have to mention that um, I'm actually not the world's biggest fan of Star Wars. I didn't grow up watching it. I, was, I grew up a, a Trekkie and watched more Star Trek. Um, so, yeah, in fact, I haven't even really seen all the movies fully yet. <laughs> I own them, which is kind of bad. Um, I saw episode burn it down for that. I know, I know. I, I and I own them. I have them on DVD, and I don't even really watch them. And and I saw episode one, two, and three. Oh man! Uh, I I saw them at midnight when they first came out. So like I was in middle school and high school, and I totally fell asleep during every one of them. You know, they watch it <laughs> from like you know midnight to three a.m. So because of that, I. I don't I don't have that 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 fandom for I guess these Star Wars games you know that I know a lot of people do. I I but, like uh, the Star Wars movies um perfectly fine, but uh, I would say I'm more of a Star Trek fan, and I know yeah. people are gonna hate me for that, but uh, the next generation is like tops, man. I can watch that anytime. Hell's yeah, hell's yeah. Well, Star Wars games have definitely been better than Star Trek games. Oh, I agree. I agree. But the reason why we started talking about this is because of Knights of the Old Republic. And it's the fact that uh, yesterday was their 10th anniversary. And that game is awesome. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah, cool classic. I don't Um, know how it was cult because that thing was amazing. Yeah, maybe not cult. Yeah, it was a damn popular game. Well, it wasn't very (laughs) popular, I don't think. But it was awesome. It was like one of the first true rpgs that uh of the of the modern day you know it, oh and couldn't you be like good and bad in that game yeah you can be good and bad it was like the prelude to like the mass effect series and this is probably yeah. where my like undying love of mass effect has come from is is stem from knights of the old republic i mean it's made by the same people yeah um you know i i played a little bit of knights of the old republic but i know they made a sequel right yes they did and that one was and, good also, but, also, but it didn't have a true ending. Did you know that? I knew that people wanted, like, another game. Is that is that why? No, well, I, I guess, like, part of it was the fact that uh, they didn't have enough, like, budget and time to properly finish it, so they just ended it at this weird juncture in the story. It, it never really has a true ending. Like, uh... That's weird. I can't remember the way it ends, but I believe it's like your spaceship takes off from some planet, and that's the end of the game. What? Yeah. And they released it like that, huh? I, I don't know why or whatever, but, uh, I mean, I should look into that, but... That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, w- one of my favorite Star Wars games was Jedi Outcast 2. That game, that game was, was bomb. Shit bomb. Oh. oh man, so much fun in multiplayer. I mean, people still love that game, you know, to this day. The it, it was it was just this it it was um it wasn't in ships. You were fighting as the Sith and as Jedi's, and you could get these different powers. And I think you could like level them up, you know, so you could make them stronger. And so you could have like force push or lightning or you know badass lightsaber duels. Oh, so much fun! Like force pushing people off edges. Oh, so they fall to the death. So I, much fun. I love that and. So, did you have it on PC or console? PC. Okay, I did too. And I can't remember... My friend's house that we had all the, like, Half-Life set up on, we had a mod for uh, Jedi Outcast, where there was, like, all sorts of maps you could download. It was awesome. And there was this one level, I, I don't know if it was one of the standard ones, but it was, like... You were walking above the city on like the walkways. Oh, so much fun to throw people off onto it to their deaths, or even better. Yeah, it was, it was got, cool. You just if they landed just on walk some up to them and, like thing. force push kill. Yeah, exactly. Or, or the lightning was super cool. Oh you know, yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I remember uh, also there was like this 
this weird move that like you could do and basically you'd use a lightsaber and you'd stab behind you and it would kill someone instantly if you were able to <laughs> land it and that was so much fun so everybody was like trying to like do all these moves where like they're trying to look badass and trying to lightsaber people from behind yeah that was so much fun. what was the game I, I know it's not jedi outcast but there's another one where you could actually play not as sith or jedi you could play as like bounty hunter and everything else i can't remember um i don't know you know there's been so many star wars games it, it wasn't like battlefront or anything like that it was the same uh setup as jedi outcast i just can't remember but uh man well the funniest part is when you'd like push somebody off of something and they they got lucky and like landed on a passing vehicle or something yeah. and survived you're like damn it <laughs> <laughs> so close to dying but that's you know that's like a movie scene you know where, like they land in the perfectly right spot um yeah you know and i like to uh, you, the star wars ships i've always loved the way that they look the way that they sound the way they, they in playing the games is always kind of bringing them to life um those are really fun you know like those space battles uh like the gamecube games that came out um I always love that the, that aspect of Star Wars titles. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. The new ones have kind of faltered, especially like um, what the hell, um, Force Unleashed. I didn't like either one of those games. Um, the Star yeah, Wars Connect um, I played game that a little bit. Was, was yeah, completely they just busted. Didn't really appeal to me. Now that next gen title that they showed off, that Star Wars one. I don't know what's it called, like Floor something i don't remember yeah i I, uh, I don't know why i can't remember the name but i know what you're talking about yeah that one did look cool yeah <clears throat> Pretty yeah what uh i'm excited for is apparently visceral is going to be doing a game for uh star wars uh visceral made what uh dead space oh so that's a big that's a big uh, publisher I'm excited for it. Well, yeah, EA owns them, so apparently EA is going to put Bioware and Visceral to work on the Star Wars franchises. You I, know what I'm, I'm excited, excited about? I want to see some Star Wars and Disney crossover. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Hearts style, I want to start seeing. I want to see I want to see Kingdom Hearts. I want to play Kingdom Hearts game. Where are we going to the Marvel Universe? Are we going to the Star Wars Universe? Yeah. That needs to happen. My confusion like is, yesterday. is why does Disney not have a, like, Smash Bros. Brawl situation going on? You know what I mean? Oh my god. That, th yeah, they're sitting on the greatest IP. Josh, you just thought of a fantastic idea. <laughs> yeah, I like, think it's because they probably don't want Mickey Mouse, like, kicking people's asses. Which is probably what Nintendo thought, too, when they made, like, you know, Mario punching people in the face. But it was... Such a good idea. Oh, dude. Could you imagine? You could have, like, Yoda versus, uh, you know, like, oh. Mickey and Goofy and any of the Marvel characters. I mean, it'd be amazing. I'm, I'm, having, I'm having a geek orgasm over here, man. You can't. You can't. <laughs> this sounds too amazing. It'd be like Iron Man versus, you know, all those people. It'd be amazing. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. Disney owns everything now. Oh, and man... They, they do own everything. Uh, you could have, like, Harry Potter and stuff in there. It'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah. So sweet. It'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. Actually, so I went I went to Disney World. No, we'll just on the topic of Disney. We're getting sidetracked. <laughs> but I went to Disney World on my honeymoon. And it is actually super fun to go as an adult I... to Disney World. <laughs> I have argued this with Cassie a hundred times. She's like, we should go. And I'm like, no way in hell. That's Dude, for kids. No, it is. It's actually really, really fun. Like, they have really, really fancy, like, adult restaurants. So, you know, you don't have all the little kids. And also, the rides are really fun. And, and you know, the food is awesome. The park is awesome. It's actually, it's good times. How long do you have to wait in line, John? Uh, a long time. You should bring a DS. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, uh, yeah, waiting in line sucked. Although they done some smart things, they do fast pass systems. Have you heard of that before? Yeah, yeah, I have. So, th so that brings it down to definitely a, a reasonable amount of time. Well, and there's I like would there's like pay... pro strat for for that. 
Well, apparently there's like an even higher version of the fast travel pass. Um, I was listening to the Adam Kroll freaking podcast that he was talking about. You can pay like $300 an hour, a minimum of six hours, to have someone walk you around the park and walk you straight to the front of any ride you want to go on. Yeah, so they have, um, I mean, of course, it's Disney. Disney gets money in a million different ways. And <laughs> that way is like, you can pay to like be a VIP. And yeah, basically, you'll have someone that's there with you. And, you know, a park employee that will basically cater to your every whim. Including getting you through lines, so hey, if you're rich, <laughs> you get to do that. I know I, I, that's all I want to be is rich enough to do that. If I was gonna go to the park, I want to be rich enough to get through lines at the park. <laughs> well, that's all I need. Man, I, I mean, that's the other reason I'm gonna go is if I can get past all the lines. So d- this is messed up. Just on that topic, um, Disney has a great policy that uh if you are handicapped or if you have a physical disability that you get to uh cut to be going to the front of the line and you know that that's really nice of the park um not all parks have to do that but uh it's cool that they do that and uh they you they the disabled person can also bring a guest i heard this is messed up i heard that there's some rich families that are hiring disabled people to just cut in line so that they don't have to wait Oh, yeah. That was, like, a huge deal. I think it was, like, a few weeks ago they were, like, talking about that. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's genius on the part of the handicapped people. Yeah, um. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a win for them. I mean, they don't have to do it, and they're they're getting buku amounts of money. It's like, the, and, it's like sitting yeah. outside of, uh, you know, Home Depot looking for work. I mean, that's smart, because if you can't yeah. find it anywhere else, then boom. You got a way to do it. Just well, wait around outside the park and be like, for $500, I'll take you to the front of every line. <laughs> Somebody's going to be like, hell you know, yeah. You know what's crazy is um, that 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 kind of actually happened to me. So when we went to Disney World for a honeymoon, we had on our little cheesy just married hats, me and my wife. And uh, there was this kid who, uh, he had a heart condition. So he was going to the front of the lines and um, he came up to it. I mean, he was about our age. And he came up to us and was like, hey, you know, it's you guys' wedding. Do you guys want to uh, cut to the front of this line, you know, for this ride? Um, and we were like, hells yeah, we do. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so we went up with him. And, I mean, it was great. And, and they get to go, you know, like in the front of the line, in the front of the ride. And, um, yeah, I mean, the kid had a great time. We had a great time. You know, we thanked him. We exchanged emails and stuff. And I was like, that kid is awesome. Good karma goes his way. Disney is hunting you down right now for admitting that. Probably, probably. <laughs> like we want our fifteen dollars yeah. back. Actually, okay, this is another genius idea that Disney has still not made yet. So, um, when we went there on our honeymoon, we also uh, we went to Universal Studios. We wanted to go to the Harry Potter theme park, and um, we were wearing our cheesy Disney hats over there. You know, which is like, I mean, that's that's sacrilegious. I mean, you can't wear like you know. <laughs> Disney hats into a Universal Studios theme park. I'm surprised they didn't kick you out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the park employees came up to me and said, hey, you know you're not supposed to wear those hats, right? You know, he was joking. Um, And, uh, well, we go, hey, you know, you guys have, like, a a Jurassic Park theme park here. I would love to wear, like, a Jurassic Park Just Married hat if you guys had one of these. Like, you know, like a T-Rex <laughs> hat or something. You know, like, give me some stupid cheesy hat and I would wear it. And he's like, that's a good idea. We should do that. And I'm like, yeah, you guys should. That would be amazing. I, I would go there and I would ra- say I was married. I want yeah, one of them hats. Ra- <laughs> yeah, I would, I would love to have, like, a T-Rex on my head, you know, that just says, like, Just Married or something rather than, you know, Mickey Mouse ears. That would be amazing. Yeah, I know. I agree. So, yeah. Universal needs to get on that. Yeah, seriously. Okay. You're sitting on a gold mine, Disney. Smash Brothers with Disney characters. Oh, yeah. Universal Studios, wedding hats. <laughs> oh, my God. We're just, with we're a just T-Rex. Ideas, Josh. With a T-Rex on it. Yes. Oh, man. Yes. That would be amazing. Yes. I hope next time you, well, either you or I goes there, we see somebody wearing a T-Rex just married hat. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. And I want 1% of those sales. We went way off topic. So, have we you did. ever played any early <laughs> Star Wars games? Uh, I played, oh, like some good arcade games. 
Well, well, yeah, um, arcade. Oh, yeah, arcade games. There was some good ones. In yeah, there. there was some like the one where you were like in the Millennium Falcon. Yes, you were. That the was gunner. pretty awesome. That was fun. Um, uh yeah, the the pod racer one for the N sixty four and the the one that was in the arcade. Okay, that, that one's fun. goofy. That one's fun though. Yeah, it's goofy. Um, I was thinking more of like the NES or Super NES platformers. I did not. I've seen like videos of them, but I never played them. They are terrible, terrible, terrible <laughs> games. Well, you don't at least say. the ones I, I I've played. I think two of them. When I was a kid, when my dad had the Nintendo, and oh my god, they were atrocious. It, it's so ridiculous. It, I mean, there was like no, uh, what do you call it? Like, the the hit detection was so far off, it was just ridiculous. Like, you'd jump and you'd go right through the middle of a, of a platform you were about to land on. It was impl- unplayable. Yeah, unplayable. They they seemed like they were just kind of at that time frame when you know games were just being cranked out and they were made with you know a small studio of like three people, and they <laughs> just needed to get it out there for the Christmas season and yeah. Well, well there's one that's like notorious yeah, where you you kill Darth Vader and he turns into a giant scorpion. That's amazing. It's a it's a that's Japanese like crossover. I can't remember. Uh, this should have been in the movie. I don't know why this wasn't in the movie. <laughs> uh, this would have been a great, you know, beginning twist? to Star Wars Episode One. <laughs> oh so man! So his his origin story. He's actually a scorpion. That sounds phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's one of the animals <laughs> that races the pod racers. He's not actually the dad. <laughs> he's fucking with him. <laughs> yeah, dude. If you watch the first three. You've ruined the story, essentially. I mean, you're supposed to watch the last three and then go back. Or just not watch the first three at all. I mean, really. The third one's acceptable, but that's only because there's like a badass lightsaber fight for 80% of the movie. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I'm just... I get tired of all the remakes, you know, and then they're like, they tweak little things or they try to improve the CGI. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. There's a yeah. one part uh, in Jabba's chamber, they changed it from a puppet to uh, to uh, CGI, and it to hasn't C- been updated since what? 1997, and it just oh. looks terrible, and you're just like, it's unwatchable. <laughs> I just want to skip past those scenes, because they're so atrocious. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Like CGI back then, I mean, other than Jurassic Park was really fucking bad. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just worse now that we have like, you know, high definition screens where you can just kind of like <laughs> see it's horrible. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't so bad when things were a little bit more blurry, but now it's just like, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah it's like all blocky looking and it doesn't look as pretty as it should. It, yeah. Well, I mean, now that it's under Disney, we're going to be seeing new movies coming out every couple of years. Yeah, I wonder how that's going to work. I, I, It's going to sell a shit ton. Well, it's going to it, sell a shit ton. I understand that, but... <laughs> I mean, are they going to like get some guy who looks like uh, um, Harrison Ford that is a lot younger and then just have Harrison Ford's voice with it? I don't... Yeah, you know, I don't know. That's that's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if, if, episode, if those episodes are going to take place like years later or if they're like right after... I, I don't know. Because if it's like 30 years later, then okay, we're we're on a solid footing, you know. He's going to be old, but if it's like Harrison immediately Ford, after, or, or like... Uh, Harrison Ford, you know, he'll be okay yeah. to look old if this movie takes place 30 years later than, you know, uh, episode uh, six. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, 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 I'll watch it. I won't know what the hell's going on. I'll be confused. <laughs> I think, to I be remember... honest, without, without, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, what's the dude's name that runs Skywalker Ranch? Um, George Lucas? George Lucas. Jesus, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. But, <laughs> without, with him gone, I feel like the stories are going to get better. Uh, he's got a good imagination, but a terrible, terrible directing and writing 
style. It's just... Well, wasn't uh, Josh Whedon going to be doing it? Oh, dude, if, if, if Josh Whedon's doing it, that would be awesome, I think. Yeah. He... It's at least going to be decent. I, I, I think it's going to be better than decent, hopefully. Well, That's on the topic of good movies, we're going to go watch Pacific Rim this weekend. Heck yeah, we are. That looks like an awesome, awesome movie. It's been getting good reviews. I wanted, I was kind of hesitant, and then it came out, and people are saying it's awesome. And it looks awesome, so I'm expecting epicness. Did you see who's in it? Uh, Yeah, the guy from Always Study in Philadelphia. Hell yeah, Charlie was in it? I'm like, fuck yeah. I am going to see I this movie just because uh, Charlie's in it. Yeah, I, I saw him on one of the talk shows, and I was like, hell yeah, now I just extra want to see it. Have you seen Horrible Bosses? No. Oh, he's in that one, too. And that one is funny. That's a good oh, movie. Oh, I should watch that. Yes, it is. Nice. Oh, you don't like it because you hate Jason Bateman. That's right. I do That's hate it. Jason Bateman. Oh, God. Yeah, I hate his face. He's like one of the main characters in it, so... Uh... <laughs> I guess that's probably the reason why you haven't seen it. Uh... Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we're going to talk about that next week. That should That's going to be an awesome topic. Okay. Um, uh, I'll have also... Finished up for one today's uh, the Walking Dead DLC, so we can talk chat a little more bit about more. That. All right. Yeah. And, uh, and is there anything coming out this week in video gaming world that uh, I'm interested in? I don't think so. Uh, nothing that I'm really aware of. Magic came out a couple weeks ago. That was pretty. I, I haven't bought yeah, any I... new cards, which sucks, but maybe I'll have to. Yeah, or at least get the game because I've been still super addicted to it. I know, Cassie's really addicted to it. She plays it in between her Civilization Five uh, marathons. That's pretty, yeah, like, it's pretty hardcore when, like, you're playing a game in between playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty meta. She's, yeah, I know, she's like, there's nothing to do, it's so hot outside, and I don't have anything to do. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> anyway. All right, man. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it sounds like we have a good episode planned for next week. I really hope so. But uh, yeah. this is No Name Josh, Bandito John, saying mahalo. Adios.